Okay, well, I think we'll get started and people are always welcome to join as, as, they, uh, as they're able. So welcome. This is Zafod, I'm Tanya. And we're here as part of an initiative from a few different uh, entities and offices. So pause your stress at the University of Saskatchewan, St. John Ambulance Therapy Dog Team, Centennial Chair in One Health and Wellness. And, uh, and all of those folks have come together to, uh, to bring you this 20 Minutes with Zafod. And so I'll start with introductions and then I've got a few kind of logistics things to talk about and describing what we're gonna do today. I wanted to mention that Ben is here uh, with us in the background, technically. Hi, Tanya. It's great to be here with you today. I'll be helping out with chat or moderating the Q&A for you. Awesome. Thank you. And it's, I'm so appreciative you're here. So thank you. So um, Ben and I chatted about that. Just in case our doorbell goes off or some, something happens while we're doing the breathing, you know, Zephod tends to bark when the, when the doorbell goes off. So I'll quickly hit mute and then Ben can just uh, let you know what's going on if that should happen. Canada Post was by earlier today and he barked. So anyway, um, today, well, first, first introduction, sorry. So my name is Tanya and I am, uh, Zephod and I are a St. John Ambulance Therapy dog team. We're not in uniform today. Usually he wears a red bandana when we visit people and I wear a, a green and black t-shirt to show that we're part of St. John Ambulance Therapy program. But Zaphod still, I tried it not so long ago, I brought out the t-shirt and, and his bandana and he still gets really excited because he thinks people are going to pet him when they put those on. So we're not in uniform today, but we are a St. John Ambulance Therapy team. And I am a University of Saskatchewan employee and I'm a yoga teacher as well. And Zaphod here, I'll tell you a little bit about him. He is almost six years old, so he's going to be six December 14th hard to believe. He has been a therapy dog team um, for about a year now and he was visiting at City Hospital at the University of Saskatchewan at the paramedics and and then we would just do kind of one-off things when when people requested as well. So he loves being a team member with me and I love being a team member with him. So we thought with this online program of Pause Your Stress, why not do something a bit different and bring some breathing exercises into it? And so that's what we're gonna do today. I thought today we would do two different exercises. One is going to be an awareness of breath and one is going to be, sometimes it's called square breathing or box breathing or counted breath. And I'll explain both of these as we get into it. But breathing can be very calming for our nervous system. And so even being aware of your breathing helps. Helps ground you, helps centers you. Yeah. And so while we're doing the breath exercise, the camera will be on Zaphod. <laughs> but, but the thing to know about Zaphod, even though he's as chill as this most of the time, dog's respiration rate is quite a bit higher than humans. So when we're doing the counted breath, especially, he'll be breathing his normal breathing rate, we'll be breathing more slowly than that as humans, as humans can. These exercises that we're gonna do can be done in any position. So you can be standing or seated or laying down, it doesn't matter. And the session is being recorded, so for those who can't join us live, you can find it on therapydogs.ca, uh, I think. <laughs> and it's part of a series, so we're going to do different breath techniques about once a month. So we've got, I think, three more of these lined up. So today's kind of the intro session. So one of the things that I love about Zephod, there are many, is his ability just to be in the moment. The moment right now is cleaning himself, but he just is fully present with whatever he's doing. And I feel I can learn so much just from 
from that example. And breathing is one of the ways that I become more present and more aware of what's going on in my, in my body and in my mind and with my emotions. So maybe let's get started with an awareness of breath. So I invite you, um, and, and these are all invitations. Um, I invite you to find a comfortable position. And settle into that position. Obviously, Zephod is modeling the laying down position, and I will be doing it seated. And feel the points of contact between your body and the surface underneath. And know that if any time during this exercise, this breathing exercise, it's not working for you or it's not serving you, you just breathe normally and you can look at Zephod <laughs> if you want. There you go. Yeah, big sigh. Okay, so we're gonna come into this exercise, which is just simply awareness of breath. So whatever posture you've chosen, adjust your position to be both comfortable and alert. You may close your eyes if you wish, or you may leave your eyes open with a soft gaze, or you can watch safe odd. In this practice, we're gonna bring our awareness to our breath, just as it is, as it moves in and out of the body. So you may notice your breath at the tip of the nostrils. Maybe you feel it in your chest. You feel your chest move with your in-breath and your out-breath. Maybe you feel your belly rise and fall. So just notice. Be in the moment. When we notice that our mind is no longer on the breath, we'll bring our awareness simply back to the breath. We're gonna do that over and over. So there's no need to change your breath in any way. Simply let your attention rest with your breathing. One in breath, and one out breath at a time. Noticing when the mind wanders from your breathing and just note what's on your mind without judgment, becoming aware, and gently drawing your attention back to your breath. One breath in, one breath out. Okay. 
One breath in. One breath out. Breathing in and out in your own revenue, nothing to change. Awareness on the act of breathing. Mindful breath. And if you find you're distracted today, that's all right. That's part of it. Just noticing what your distractions are. And coming back to the simplicity of breathing. And as we come to the close of this exercise, just take a moment to appreciate that you've taken some time to pause, to build your awareness of the present moment, and to nurture yourself in this way. And if your eyes are closed, gently open them or lift the gaze if it's downcast. And just taking any movement that would feel good after that short practice of breathing awareness. I will answer questions um, after we do the second practice, so you can pop them into the chat. And we will attend to those after this second practice. So I'll just describe what we're going to do. Box or square breathing. And this is something I use quite um, often in my own life. Um, I did it just before coming online today because I was feeling a little bit nervous. And the great thing I think about it is it can be done quite subtly and no one needs to know that you're doing something. So I've done it in meetings before or um, when I'm having a hard conversation with someone I love, I've been known to do this practice quite subtly and I, I don't think anyone even knows it's happening. And it just again helps calm and center my nervousness if I'm feeling nervousness or helps me feel more centered and grounded. So here's the explanation. And I will count for us. Um, so there are four parts to this breath, an inhale, and then a pause or holding of the breath, and then an exhale, and then a pause at the end of the exhale. And the reason it's called box or square breathing is because each of those parts of the breath will be an equal length. So today we're going to try four, a count of four. And if for some reason a count of four does not serve you, just change the count. That's that it doesn't it doesn't matter what the count is at all, um, as long as each part of your breath is equal. 
an, an equal length. And again, if you find it just isn't right for you today, just return your breath to normal at any time and just be here with us. So I thought just before we, <clears throat> just before we start, I'd share a little factoid <laughs> about dogs and human breathing. And so it's really cool that our noses um, do the same functions. So dogs can both breathe with their nose and they can smell with their nose. So part of the air goes to part of the brain that you know discerns or um, can distinguish scent and part of it goes you know for breathing and humans our noses also do that so that's kind of a shared characteristic even though our breathing rate is quite different between dogs and humans um, our noses kind of perform the same function one thing about dogs though is that their breath they can actually breathe in and out at the same time. So they have a continuous cycle of breath. Whereas we humans, um, you know, breathe in and then breathe out and then breathe in. So, all right, let's get settled again in some kind of posture, standing or seated or laying down. And again, just notice your body in the position you've chosen. And then we'll take a breath in together and an exhale. And then we'll inhale one, two, three, four, hold one, two, three, four, Exhale, one, two, three, four. Hold, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Hold, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, inhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, hold, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Hold, one, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Return the breath to normal. Zaphod has just gone to look at the back door because something's happening in our backyard. So I expect him back shortly. I have a treat for you, Zaphod. <laughs> Sometimes treats help. Zaphod! So just letting those exercises that we've done, just letting be in the body, notice how that feels for you. Away. And like I just gave Zephod a little treat, give yourself a little pat on the back for carving out some time for you. 
I hope that you found those two breath exercises enjoyable and know that you can use them anytime, anywhere. And uh, now if anyone has any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. And I'll just hang around for a bit to see if there's any any questions anyone has about how that how they experienced that or if my instructions weren't clear. Oh yeah, sorry, I was meant to say put them in the chat. Oh, by the way, what's the treat is one question. Thank you. I'll answer that. Um, I'll answer what a treat is. So for Zephod, we get these little um, cheeky, we call them cheeky treats and they're just little hard treats. This is my other dog who is wondering why he doesn't get a treat as well. Um, he is not a St. John Ambulance Therapy uh, dog uh, therapy team member. So he gets his own treats, don't worry. Anyway, they're little hard um, chicken flavored treats and Zephod loves them. And this is why breath practice is so helpful because you just never know what life is going to bring, right? So the therapy dog leaves and the non-therapy dog is here and I can breathe through it all. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, thank you. Someone online knows that this is Stanley. So hi, Stanley. And Stanley says hi back. He wants to get in on the gang on the on the event okay question do you have any advice for people who are new to breath practice about dealing with distracting thoughts or having a hard time focusing i i don't know what you mean <laughs> as two dogs are around me um yeah you know just um just be gentle with yourself that's probably my biggest advice because part of noticing your distractions is re that's really important because there is no perfect breath right there is no like these are these are techniques but there's nothing magic in them it's about bringing your full attention to what you're doing and so that's my biggest advice don't don't be hard on yourself just keep trying keep practicing and keep coming back to the breath. And even if, you know, if your breath is super short and kind of harried, notice that. That's okay. That's what your breath is right in this moment. All right. And a question about what my background in, in uh, breath is and when I came to teaching this. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I have been a yoga teacher and a meditation teacher since about 2004. And in all kinds of my training to do those um, things, breathing is a really important um, aspect of that. So I learned these techniques through my yoga and meditation training. But it's one thing to learn something in your training, and it's another thing to apply it to your life. So I've had a breath practice for a long time because it helps me in tough situations. It helps me um, when I'm feeling strong emotion, when I'm feeling unsure of myself um, and just to feel really grounded and just my whole, my whole moment changes when I do some of these techniques. So that's why I believe in it. Okay, I'm going to just bring the computer over to just show you that Zephod hasn't actually left the building. <laughs> he just wants to go outside now. <laughs> Those of you who know Zephod knows that he loves, loves being outside. So maybe I will um, end here. I want to be conscious of time and uh, I'll let him outside. So thank you for joining. We have more of these scheduled. So check out uh, Instagram or Facebook or the therapydogs.ca website. And uh, the dates are all there. And thank you so much. Thank you.